Legislative initiatives regarding how U.S. farmers house their animals have been on the rise. For the egg industry, which has been a main target of the recent legislative assaults, it's long been a holistic approach where science and facts have been the focus. The most recent of the industry's effort is a study being conducted by the Coalition for a Sustainable Egg Supply that will look into the animal welfare advantages and disadvantages of various housing systems. We recently paid a visit to Michigan State University to talk with Dr. Jeff Armstrong, Dean of the College of Ag and Natural Resources there, about that effort. This is a coalition that started with uh, McDonald's, Cargill, Michigan State University, and University of California, Davis. Uh, and the whole idea is to look at egg production from a, from a holistic perspective. So if you change, if you change um, hen housing, what does that do to food safety? What does it do to carbon footprint? What does it do for the worker environment? And what does it do for the cost of production and the cost of eggs to the consumer? From a Michigan State perspective, what we've been saying for several years to multinational food companies, to the food sector, is the only way to avoid revolutionary spikes of change in the food system uh, is to take a holistic approach because there's so many single slice groups out there like HSUS or PETA that want to see one thing change and they are not really focusing on the holistic approach or system-wide impact. So what we're going to do is look at uh, uh, egg production in three different types of systems. One would be the traditional cage system, 96 to 97 percent of the birds are housed in, in cages uh, with no enrichments. Um, 10, 15 years ago, it's been reported very, very well in feedstuffs, birds were given 48 to 54 square inches. Now, and again based on science, um, 80 to 85 percent of the birds have 67 square inches. In the case of McDonald's, it's 72 square inches. So that's the baseline. Um, that's that's the, the system that will be um, uh, sort of the base comparison, I should say. And then we'll look at an aviary. So that's where the birds have free, free range within a building. So it's in, in, inside. And then an enriched cage. So an enriched cage, what happens there is using European guidelines, instead of 67 square inches, birds have 116 square inches per bird. But they have perches, they have a nest box, and a scratch area. So those are behaviors that a bird wants to perform. Now one can argue whether they need to do that or not, but birds want to perform those behaviors. So for every bird you need six inches of perch. And all birds want to perch, especially at night. And it is somewhat stressful to a bird if they can't perform those behaviors. Now the big question is, well, how stressful is it? Because we know mortality in an aviary is going to be higher than the cage because the advantage of the cage, small group size, hens don't peck each other as much. Two really sophisticated terms, feather pecking and cannibalistic pecking. I think everybody understands those two are bad types of pecking. That's why mortality is higher in non-cage than cage. The upcoming study is one of the first to take a look at the different production systems for laying hens at a commercial level. The buildings, it'll be 50,000 birds in each of the three systems. So this is a commercial scale. It's going to go through two life cycles. Uh, the buildings are going to be equipped with uh, video, uh, video monitors. Uh, we will also be using some, uh, some sensors that have been developed here at Michigan State University in collaboration with our College of Engineering where we can monitor birds 24-7 and, and see how they move around. You know, there's a report just out, a European study just out that that if you take a snapshot and you look, you'll see more broken bones and birds that are in a non-cage. But that makes sense. That's one disadvantage of the non-cage system. There are advantages and disadvantages of different systems. Dr. Armstrong believes that enriched cages may certainly be an option from a welfare standpoint, but food affordability will also come into play. The tough part is the ethics of the cost of food because it's still labeled as a cage and there's going to be a cost, uh, added cost, of uh, putting in an enriched cage. We, we know, I can tell you from discussions and evaluations of the figures from Europe and uh, some people talking about it in the U.S., that it is a considerable uh, cost per hen 
increase, uh, maybe 40% increase in cost to build the facility. Now your, your production, you, the output, feed efficiency, uh, it's going to be as good or slightly better in an enriched cage versus a conventional cage. The goal of the study is to understand the sustainability impacts of various laying hen systems. The work will result in meaningful science-based data that will help guide future production and purchasing decisions. For Feedstuffs Food Link, I'm Sarah Muirhead.